We have come into this place to worship and magnify the Lord, the risen Lord. We are so thankful that God did not find it robbery to give the second part of the Godhead, that of the word made flesh, that we may have a right to the tree of life and a way back to the Father. So on this day of Pentecost, we come to celebrate the risen Savior, just as that fiery spirit of the Holy Ghost came in and was incorporated in those that was in the upper room. We thank God for that opportunity to come and serve with that same overpouring of, and outdwelling of the Holy Spirit that God has so freely given unto us as God's people. So at this particular time, let us rejoice and magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. As we have entered into the presence of the Lord, we shall rejoice, magnify, and glorify his name. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come, Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Rushing wind of the Spirit, breathe new life into us. Blazing flame of the Spirit, burn away our fears. Let us be prepared to worship and praise you, O Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, come upon us this day and fill us with your love. Fling wide the doors, open the windows, let the Spirit of God pour in that the day of Pentecost is here. Let us rejoice. Hallelujah.
Come Holy Spirit, come fire divine, and fill the hearts of your people on this Pentecost morning. We gather in the name of your Son, Jesus, gracious God, asking that you will visit us in our homes, visit us at our workplaces, visit us wherever we may be at this moment in time. But above that, God, unite us as your church, unite us as your body of Christ. Unite us, God, that we might be able to go out to the world and preach your gospel the way they did on the day of Pentecost, preaching the word in, such, in a manner such that all who will understand and all will receive, no matter their life experience, no matter their background, no matter what they've come from, no matter what they've done, and no matter where they've been. Oh, gracious God, breathe into us your spirit, for we need your power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your anointing and let it fall down. Let it fall down right now. I'll be reading Numbers chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on them and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is God's word for the people everywhere. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven, above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. The Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of God for people everywhere. The book of Malachi tells us and teaches us to bring the full tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and thus put me to the test. Said the Lord of hosts, see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. We receive that. Amen. We may give and give generously, give lovingly, and give with a sense of earnest and purpose so that there will be meat in your house so that mission, ministry, and service and worship may take place and go forward from your holy house. And God, as we give, we know you to be a God of increase. So take what we render and give increase, God. Grow it, multiply it, make it bigger and make it more abundant so that your purposes with it will be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art called. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my Spirit, save me by thy grace. Thou, the 
the spring of all my comfort more than life to me whom have I on earth beside thee whom in heaven but thee singing Calling, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Oh, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Our text this morning comes from Acts, the second chapter, which has already been heard, but I'm going to read just a portion of it again. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven, there came a sound. I would like to preach this morning from the topic, there is a sound. I remember over 20 years ago, I lived in this apartment that had this big window in the front of the apartment and a big window in the back of the apartment. In between both windows were the dining room and the living room. You could see straight through the apartment. When it was storm, it seemed as if there was no escape from the storm. I could not sit in the living room or the dining room. Therefore, I would sit in the hallway clutching the arms of my baby because I was afraid of the storm. The lightning would appear to go straight through the windows from one side to the other side and light up the entire apartment. In the hallway, I could escape from seeing the storm out of the big windows, but I could not escape from the sound of the storm. The sound would let me know that the storm was still alive. The sound would let me know that the storm was still active. The sound would let me know that the storm was still there. The sound would let me know that there was something happening that I could not see. The sound would let me know the force of the wind on the outside. The sound would give me an idea of what was to come. The echoes and vibrations of the storm would fill the space in which I occupied. 
Acts, the second chapter, talks about a sound. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Pentecost is a religious observance that has its roots in the Old Testament and continues to be observed in both Judaism and Christianity. In this text, it is the first Pentecost after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On this Pentecost, in Acts the second chapter, the Holy Spirit, as promised by Jesus, descended on the disciples. The Bible says suddenly there was a sound on the day of Pentecost. Unexpectedly, there was a sound. Immediately, there was a sound. Instant Simultaneously, there was a sound. The sound was so different from what they had ever experienced that the only way for Luke, the writer of Acts, to describe the sound was to give a metaphor of a violent wind. There was this sound likened unto a forceful wind coming down from heaven that filled the space in which they occupied. There is a sound. Some call it the sound of Pentecost. Some say it was the sound of God's spirit being released on the earth. It was the sound of the promised Holy Spirit. There was a sound like no other sound. On that Pentecost day, Luke writes in the book of Acts, there was a sound as forceful, a sound of forceful wind coming down from heaven. Today, as we recognize Pentecost in the Christian community, community, I want to surmise that there is a sound. Friday morning, as I sat in my house writing this sermon, I sat between two different sounds. I sat between the sound of what was happening in America and the sound of Pentecost. As I turned on the news and listened to the reports of the police station burning down in Minnesota, I heard a sound. As I watched the police officer arrest Omar Jimenez, I heard a sound. I heard the sound of the rush of a violent wind sweeping car across the streets of America. From the west coast to the east coast, I heard a sound. I heard the sound of oppression and justice. I heard the sound of people crying out, how long? I heard the sound of African Americans standing up demanding equal rights. I heard a sound. I heard the sound of racial injustice and economic inequality in the United States. The sound of inadequate resources in public schools. The sound of broken school systems where there are children who get resources and some who will not. The sound of children not able to engage in education because there is no internet at home. The sound of unequal distribution of income. I heard a sound. I heard the sound of men and women crying out, me too. The sound of racist policies and practices designed to hold the African American community to down. down. I heard a sound, the sound of the black community crying out to black lives matter. I heard the sound of our black boys dying on the streets, the sound of mothers and fathers crying 
over the bodies of their children. As I listened on Friday, I heard a sound ringing out in Minnesota. It rings out in Ferguson. It rings out in Cleveland. It rings out in New York. I heard a sound ringing out in the streets of Baltimore. It rings out in Louisville. It rings out in Atlanta. I heard a sound ringing out from the East Coast to the rest, the West Coast, uh, the sound of Tamir Rice, uh, the sound of Sandra Bland, uh, the sound of Mike Brown, uh, the sound of, Ch of Charleston, uh, the sound of Charleston Nine, the sound of Trayron Martin, the sound of Eric Garner, the sound of Freddie Gray, the sound of Breonna Taylor, the sound of George Ford. Do you hear it? There is a sound. I can't breathe. I can't breathe again. There is a sound. I heard a sound. We can't breathe are the words of our brothers and sisters in the streets, the sound that rang out so loud that we can't hide from the sound. We cannot hide from the voices of our brothers and sisters crying out for justice. We cannot hide from the voices that cry out saying, how long will this go on? We can't hide from this sound. This is a sound. As I sat on Friday morning and looked at the news, I I heard a sound. This is the sound and this this time the sound is too loud and like all other sounds it has been ringing out too long. But as I sat in the midst of that sound I began to hear another sound and that's the sound of Pentecost. I sat pondering on what I was hearing across uh, the streets of America. And as God, and, and, and as I, I, as I sat uh, and listened to the sound in our streets, uh, God had to take me back to the text uh, and reminded me that if I sit uh, too long in this sound, it will drown out uh, his sound. We need to hear that, uh, my brothers and my sisters, if we sit uh, too long in this sound, it will drown out the voice uh, of God's sound. God took me back uh, to Acts, the second chapter, and I begin to hear another sound, and that is the sound of Pentecost. And the Bible says that the sound that Luke heard on that Pentecost day was so loud that it filled the entire house where there was where they were sitting. My brothers and my sisters, we need to hear the sound of Pentecost fill the streets of America. We need to hear the echoes and the vibrations of the sound of Pentecost. Pentecost uh, fill the spaces that we occupy. Luke heard a sound uh, like the rush of a violent wind coming down uh, from heaven. We need uh, to hear the sound uh, of Pentecost coming down uh, from heaven like the rush uh, of a violent wind across uh, the streets of America from the east coast to the west coast. Uh, we need the sound uh, of Pentecost. I hear the sound of Pentecost. I hear the sound of the prophet Isaiah saying, woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of Pentecost uh, being released in the streets. Uh, I hear the sound of God's spirit uh being released on the earth. It was the sound of the promised Holy Spirit. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of Pentecost. I hear the sound of the prophet Amos saying, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever flowing stream. I hear a sound. I hear the, I hear the prophet Jeremiah saying, do justice and 
righteousness uh, and deliver from the hands of the oppressor he who have been robbed uh, and do no wrong or violence uh, to the resident alien and fatherless and the widow nor shed innocent blood in this place I hear the sound of Pentecost. I hear Jesus saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty in the year of the Lord's favor. I hear the sound of Pentecost, the sound of deliverance, the sound of comfort, the sound of guidance, the sound of intercession, the sound sound of ways being made, the sound of doors being opened, the sound of minds being regulated, the sound of hearts being mended. I hear the sound of Pentecost. Open your ears, do you hear it? I hear the sound of Pentecost going across from the east coast to the rest, the west coast. I hear the sound of Pentecost as the writer would say, oh, over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. I come to tell you this morning that in the midst of all of this, God is in the midst of it. God is still active. God is still moving. God is still healing. God is still saving. God is still delivering. I hear the sound of Pentecost for God is still speaking this morning over top of all the sounds that we hear just listen do you hear him? God is still speaking God is still delivering God is still healing God is still active I hear the sound of Pentecost I hear the sound this morning. Oh, yes, I heard the sounds on Friday. I heard the sounds all through the day of our brothers and our sisters out in the streets. I heard the sounds. But then, as I listened a little closely, I also heard the sound of Pentecost. I hear the sound of God's spirit still moving and still operating and still alive with us today. The sound of Pentecost. Do you hear it? Do you hear it this morning? The sound of Pentecost and Pentecost. God is still moving, my brothers and sisters. God is still alive, my brothers and sisters. God is still active in the midst of all that we are going through. So I want to say to you this morning, if you find yourself at a crossroads, you are standing in the midst of two sounds. As I stood on Friday, the sounds of the street and the sounds of Pentecost. I want to invite you today to kind of lean just a little more on the other side. Not and we dismiss the sound on this side. No. We let this sound bring just a little loud. Listen. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, on this Pentecost Sunday, fall afresh on us every person all across this connection, every home that is represented in this worship service, fall afresh right now in the mighty name of Jesus and see the need in every house. 
whatever's going on and with every situation. Right now, Father, while your spirit is falling, meet the needs of your people all across this connection. Where there's peace needed in the house, be our peace. Where there is love needed in the house, be love. Where there is healing needed in the house, be healing in Jesus' name. Where strength is needed, where hope is needed, where guidance is needed, where a way needs to be made, be a way maker divine in the name of Jesus. Lord, you fell at Pentecost and your fire continues to fall right now. Energize us. Transform us right now, God. Continue to make us new creatures in you every day. Forgive our sins, Father. Help us to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. And God, heal our land. Heal our land. Heal our land. Here at these shores and all across the world. Heal our land in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. God, we just thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for who you are in our lives. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that as, as we hear this sounds that's ringing out in our streets over last week, and that's been ringing out for a long time, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that we also hear you. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, touch your people. This morning, God, be with your people. Let them know, God, and give them the assurance of your word that says that you will never leave us or forsake us. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, give the, the, your people the assurance of your word that say, Yea, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, that we shall fear no evil. Why? Because... You are with us. So God, this Pentecost morning, just remind us that you're right there with us. Just like you were with the disciples in the second chapter of Acts. God, you're right there with us now. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And I want to say if there's anybody who have joined us, on any kind of social media platform, whichever way that you are looking at us this morning, whether it is Zoom or Facebook or YouTube or even on a website, I want to say to you this morning that God's Spirit reaches past all of that and meets you right where you are. Right where you are, right in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you find yourself, or even on your steps, wherever you find yourself this morning, God's Spirit reaches you right where you are. So I want to say to you this morning, if by chance you're looking at us this morning, you don't have a relationship with Jesus the Christ, I just want to invite you to Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that God did something about it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be set free. I want to invite you to that freedom this morning that we can get by having a relationship with Jesus the Christ. So if you don't have a relationship with Jesus the Christ and you say I want to know Jesus for myself. I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. The Bible says that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. No matter where you are, in your living room, no matter where you are, you can do that right in your heart. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. 